Hello and happy Sabbath Summit family. So glad you could worship with us today. Whether you're joining us in person or online, we're so glad you're here. Before we start our service, we'd love to share a few announcements with you. Experience a captivating evening of the arts at the beautiful Morton H. Marson Symphony Center this coming Sunday, March 24th at 6 p.m., where you'll be treated to harmonious melodies of renowned composers while supporting the musical education of young, bright minds. You can purchase your tickets by texting Meyerson24 to 41444. Have you ever wanted to learn to sew but don't know where to begin? Come to our new beginner sewing class meeting in the Annex every second and fourth Tuesdays from 3.30 to 5 p.m. For more info, you can contact Sherry Harris or follow the info on your screen. We have a new education group starting for caregivers. It will meet in room 208 in the gathering place from 4 to 5 p.m. every fourth Tuesday. If you or someone you know is a caregiver, share this information with them. We want to support you. For more information, you can contact Dottie Saxon at 817-715-3007. Last but certainly not least, we are very excited to announce Christian music group Shane and Shane are coming to Keene. Join us on Sunday, April 21st at 7 p.m. for a free night of worship right here in the church sanctuary. We'd love to see you there. These are all of our announcements for today. We'd now like to invite you into a posture of worship as we bring praise to our good God. As we celebrate together, let us remember in everything we do to love, connect, and share. Thank you, Miguel, for that beautiful prelude. Good morning, church family. How are you today? Good morning. Happy Sabbath. 
This is a high weekend for us at Southwestern Adventist University where we get to celebrate the gift of music, our talented young musicians who are developing their skills to the, for the glory of God. And we are so glad that you are here with us this morning for our church service. I was reminded earlier today that it was in 1993 that the Centennial Concert was first hosted by Southwestern Adventist College at the Meyerson Symphony Center. So this is a tradition that has lived on and we are so happy to continue that tradition as we will have our Pinnacle Meyerson Concert tomorrow evening. It was in 1995 that I actually first arrived on this campus to study as a freshman graduated in 1999 and began my career as a professor in business in 2012. I frame those years because this year we are celebrating 130 years of education at Southwestern Adventist University. Yes. God has blessed and he continues to bless and provide us with this opportunity to provide knowledge, faith, and service through Christ-centered education here in Keene, Texas. And this year for the Meyerson concert, I was, had the privilege of inviting our former presidents to attend. And so I wanted to share with you the names of the special guests who are here, and they will also be participating throughout the service this morning, providing special readings. Don Sully served as the president of Southwestern Adventist University from 2002 to 2005. Eric Anderson, yes. <laughs> Eric Anderson served as the president of Southwestern Adventist University from 2005 to 2014. And Ken Shaw served as the president of Southwestern Adventist University from 2014 to 2021. We are so glad that you are here to celebrate with us and worship with us this morning. So now I would like to share with you a little bit of context for our service this morning. This service is designed to create an opportunity to learn more about congregational worship music through a blending of songs, hymns, instrumental music, readings, and scripture, all based on a theme. Today, we will focus on streams of congregational song, a lyrical roadmap for understanding worship music, developed by C. Michael Hahn, University Distinguished Professor of SMU. Hahn chose the imagery of streams because they have a source, meander, are shaped by as well as shaping topography, flow at different speeds, have cross currents, and flow into each other. Musical genres and styles share these same characteristics, continually changing and adapting over time. All Christian music is designed to help connect a particular worshiping community to the salvation story. And it is important to remember that our worship is influenced by many backgrounds, cultures, and experiences. Not surprisingly, we each have opinions and preferences that reflect our experience. Ultimately, Congregational song is a witness, someone's personal testimony that comes from their experience and is accepted into our corporate worship. Singing calls us to join with our neighbors, love God and love your neighbor. Paul urged the people of Ephesus to sing the words and tunes of the psalms and hymns when they were together and to go on singing and chanting to the Lord in their hearts. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5.20 This worship service is a unique opportunity to respond to Paul's advice to gather together with friends old and new to sing praises to the Creator. Will you join me in an opening prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for the gift of the Sabbath. As a community of believers, we are gathered here today to give you our praise and worship. And dear Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit enters this place and through our songs of thanksgiving and of worship, that you will be glorified. Thank you so much for this community. 
Thank you for the gift of Adventist education, and thank you so much for being here with us today. In your name we pray, amen. I invite you all to stand for our opening hymn. as we sing our next hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
you all. Can you hear me? There it is. Happy Sabbath. So good to be with you all. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Pastor Anthony Leiter. I serve as pastor for young adult ministry here. And man, we're just so glad you're here today to worship with us. And for those of you who are visiting for music festival weekend, we're so glad you're here. We extend a welcome to you. We're so glad you're here. Well, before uh, we move into a time of worship and giving, uh, we'd like to uh, give a good report for those of you who are keen people. Pastor Ruben and Cassie have been sequestered away, and we have a gift that has arrived on the 21st. This is Isaac Ruben Casabona. He was born on the 21st, eight pounds, zero ounces at 12.44 a.m. So yeah, we can give him a hand. We're just so, so excited for them. So if you see them, uh, extend some love. You'll see them eventually back in a couple weeks. But um, one final thing is there will be a meal train, I believe. There'll be a link, and that will be sent out um, at a later date. So you'll see that probably next Sabbath as well, so you could uh, send some meals their way. So that is the first thing. Let's move into a time of worship in giving now. Our offering today is going to Texas Vision. This goes to support Adventist Education, Lake Whitney Ranch Development, and uh, church building projects all in the Texas conference here. So why don't we uh, bow our heads and pray together as we pray over our worship and giving. Jesus, we thank you so much for this, uh, this Sabbath day. God, this chance to rest together, to come into your presence, into your space, into your time, and to rest, to take a breather. God, but more than that, God, we offer up a prayer of thanksgiving, of gratitude. God, we're so grateful for you, for all that you've done for us, and for all that you will continue to do. And so, God, as we give to to the ministry done right here in the Texas Conference, God, out of the generosity of our hearts because of what you've done for us, we just pray that you would bless these funds going forward as they go to bless our community and our conference and our state of Texas. We thank you so much for this, all in your name. Amen. Amen, amen. I believe now... It's time for the children to come up, so I would like to invite you, if you are a one of the smaller ones on the smaller side, come on up for story time. We'd love to see you.
Good morning, boys and girls. Let's make our way over here so we can start with our story today. everyone how are you guys doing good well I'm so glad to see all of you here today we have a story but before that my name is Rebecca my name is Elizabeth and we have a question for you guys do you guys like science experiments yeah, yeah. yeah? well we're gonna do a science experiment with you today but before that let me just read a Bible verse okay let's listen it's found in Isaiah 1:18, and it says, Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Okay, now we're ready for our science experiment. Do you want to see what's going to happen? Yeah. Oh, okay, listen, here we have three cups. This one over here, I'm going to raise it so you can see it. This one over here is water. This represents all of us, men and women, we are this cup of water, okay? Don't forget about that. This one over here, what color is this? Orange. Ooh, it's very dark, isn't it? This represents sin. And this one over here, that represents Jesus. So as you can see, this cup over here, which one? is this one what is representing that's us yes so when god created the garden of eden adam and eve were pure however this purity didn't last too long because soon after that sin came into the world and guess what, what? we were all stained with it <gasps> what color is it now yes now when sin came to the world, now we also have that sin from Adam and Eve, but we've also sinned on our own. We, we probably have lied. Maybe we get angry at our brothers or sisters. Or maybe we say some words that we shouldn't say. Or maybe we disobey our parents. And it's just a lot of sad choices that we make that make us really, really so what do you guys think is there something we can do so we can make this clear again okay yeah that's a good idea let's see what we can do ready Ooh, what happens when we talk to jesus and we ask for forgiveness oh we pray okay let's see what happens when we pray and we talk to jesus about it Yeah, now it's clear. So now, when we have Jesus, when we ask him for forgiveness, our sins are washed away. And guess what? After we have Jesus in our heart, even if we sin again, it's just a drop. But look at it. Is it stained? No. What happens when we have Jesus in our heart? It's still clear because Jesus forgives our sins. Oh, and also, it's a little bit more yellow. I can kind of Just tell. a little bit, yes. A little bit. But yeah, a little bit. But, but it's still clear, right? Do you guys see that it's still clear? So when we, when we sin, when we make some bad choices, we always need to tell God, and He will always make sure to wash our sins. So you see, as long as we have Jesus in our hearts, we will have the strength so that we can make good choices. So how about we pray about it and we ask Jesus to forgive all of our sins and to help us to make good choices. Can I tell you another thing that I saw? You can tell me later, okay? Keep it okay. here. Don't forget about it. Keep it here. Ready? Let's pray. You want to pray? Come here. We're going to have two prayers, okay? He's going to pray first, and then I'm going to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for a good day. 
Thank you that we get to have church. Jesus, let me pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much because you give us another Sabbath to come to church and praise your name. We ask that you forgive all of our sins and that you help us to have the wisdom we need so we make good choices. In your name, amen. Thank you. You can walk back to your seats. It is not known when music was first used to worship God, but we do know that worship included music up to the time of King David. The Psalms of David included in the Old Testament reveal human emotions of suffering, of lament, of love of praise and personal relationship with the Lord. Perhaps the best known of these psalms is Psalm 23, the words that say, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. The power of David's songs is evident in a multitude of music that continues to utilize the timeless words. For example, the hymn entitled, He Leadeth Me, was composed in the mid-19th century and is inspired from the phrase of the beginning of the 23rd Psalm. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. By his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I will be, for by his hand he leadeth me. These words express our relationship with the Lord, involving our need to follow God and his willingness to lead us. The holding of hands describes the close relationship that Jesus desires to have with each one of us. Therefore, to be his faithful follower, we must have love for him that encourages an emulation of his behavior and his character. The Jewish worship experience included the Psalms of David, which were widely used up until the time of Christ and beyond. The New Testament record states that when the Lord's Supper was concluded, they sang a hymn and departed for the Garden of Gethsemane. For the following 500 years, it is believed that the Christian community continued to sing songs of Jewish origin. Interestingly, 
the melodies and the sounds of the Jewish psalm singing has been lost to history, which has given the Christians the opportunity to express the ideas and words in their own contemporary voices in each generation since. The next two pieces, Great is Thy Faithfulness and It Is Well, will be played by the combined band and orchestra. They are examples of the large and various Protestant stream of music introduced with the Reformation of the 16th century as Protestant men and women recorded their praise and prayers in musical form. The stream includes paraphrases of scripture, fresh metrical settings of the Psalms, hymns for the Christian year, hymns on ministry. Consider looking up these words in your hymnal or on your cell phone if that's where you have the hymnal copied.
Good morning. What a privilege to be in a room full of people worshiping together. Some of my earliest memories are being with the family as they would play and sing, and I knew that I had a role to make noise, and eventually the noise turned to music, and, and I got to participate right along with the family. And that's what worship is, is it's family. As we've looked at some of the streams already and we continue down this path, I'm going to speak just briefly about the global ecumenical stream of music and worship. This is a focus on a contribution of really two-thirds of the world's Christians, especially those from native and indigenous populations around the globe. And it uh, finds in there a desire to respect and foster the genius and talents of all races and peoples. And uh, it includes many professional traditions around the world that are now being included in new hymnals as well. And uh, I had an experience a few years ago. I went to the Worship and Music Conference that's held every year at Calvin College. And in that particular year, they hold it annually, uh, they had released a brand new hymnal. And the hymnal's title is called Lift Every Voice. And the uh, implicit purpose of the hymnal was to include as many of these traditions as possible. So it's a hymnal that has the hymns you might expect to hear and see and find, but it has many other traditions represented as well. And we were experiencing worship last night. Some of the students gave some short uh, devotional thoughts about music and worship, and they mentioned a sense of gratitude to be brought, which I thought was so meaningful as we think about the gratitude that we express in worship and the gratitude I feel for the various uh, influences and experiences that I've had. One of the students also brought up a, a text in Ephesians that talks about psalms, spiritual songs, and hymns. And I thought I would just expand that just slightly because there is a difference. Uh, psalms, of course, is what we've already heard about a little bit and what we know to be from David in the book of Psalms. Spiritual songs are worship melodies and tunes and music that quote scripture. And we sang one of those earlier with holy, 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 which is quoting Revelation. Uh, many musicians love settings of Mary's Magnificat. There's some beautiful versions of that in the repertoire. But by and large, most songs that we sing in worship are in the category of hymns. And hymns is simply a term that means music that expresses our shared beliefs. And it is music that we choose to use together in worship. So I was at this conference, I was learning about some different traditions, and I saw that there was a workshop by a Native American from the Navajo tradition, which caught my attention right away. Um, I was born in Alamosa, Colorado, which is as small and middle of nowhere as you might think. Uh, but I loved it there, and the town is in the shadow of Mount Blanca, a big massive with four peaks on it. And that particular massive is the symbolic eastern edge of traditional Navajo territory. And so all through my life, I've had an interest in native traditions. And so I saw this workshop, and I decided to go. And I was surprised by what I discovered, because what the presenter of the workshop shared was that he had a burden for the Navajo people and their worship. When Protestants and Catholic uh, faith groups came into the Navajo people, they did two very wonderful things. They translated the Bible to Navajo, and then they translated worship music into Navajo. But what they didn't realize is that Navajo is a tonal language, much like Mandarin. So you can say the same syllable, but if you say it high, medium, or low, it has a totally different meaning. And of course, if you take the words and put them into Navajo, they look fine on the page, but the minute you sing them to the, the uh, melodies that were brought in with those words, it has no meaning. And uh, so this, this particular composer had a strong desire to create Navajo music for the Navajo people. And I'd like to share that with you today and have the opportunity to bring something from a global and ecumenical tradition to us. We often go the other direction, but it's not as often that we get to experience something new. And of course, the words amazing grace have powerful meaning. 
And so this is a setting of Amazing Grace by this Navajo composer um, that I'm going to just play for you. I, I love to collect native flutes. Uh, this is my latest. If you're wondering how many native flutes are enough, the answer is just one more. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this particular one was built by a man that lives right here in Weatherford, though, and uh, has a lovely tone. So I'm just going to play you this, uh, this Navajo version of Amazing Grace briefly. beautiful melody, and so we're going to now sing it. I hope you were paying attention. <laughs> I won't make you sing it in Navajo. We'll do it in English. Amen, yes. Uh, we'll just do probably the first and last verse. We'll see, but the, the band and the, the uh, orchestra are going to help me out. So the first thing that we need is just a little bit of pace, a little bit of rhythm. Music can be defined as just organized sound in time at its basic level. So here's the time aspect. You all can help me out and just just give us a beat here. So we'll go about. Okay, good. Just keep going. Uh, now, then, the gentlemen are going to give us a pedal point. So this is another music term that I love. It comes from the organ because you would just put your foot down on a note and then that sound just goes. So that's a pedal point, and uh, the gentlemen are going to help us with that. Now, um, we'll have the ladies, they're a little, they can handle a little bit more. Um, so they're going to, don't read into that. So they're going to give us a chant uh, also, but it's an uh, IOD in this year. So our part is to do the amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Let's do it again. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but when we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we know less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Thank you. Gospel Revival is a musical stream marked by songs of praise, personal experience, and triumphant faith. Songs from this stream continue to find their way into a remarkable number of hymnals and song services, even in traditions where they've not been a dominant voice. Examples of this stream include Because He Lives, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and people need the Lord. The related spiritual stream finds a voice in virtually all confessional traditions. Here one will find a variety of musical expressions from Negro spirituals and hymns to various styles of gospel music. This stream offers us songs born in the crucible of struggle and reflecting scripture and often expressing faith in the first person. Since the middle of the 20th century, virtually all newly published hymnals include songs from this stream. Spirituals with roots into slavery have become America's major contribution to the world church. 
Examples of this music stream include Precious Lord and Sweet, Sweet Spirit. We will now hear You Are My All in All from the Gospel Revival stream, followed by the beautiful spiritual, His Eye is on the Spirit.
Pentecostal song, often called praise and worship, or contemporary Christian music, began with early 20th century American Pentecostal traditions, such as the Azusa Street Revival of Los Angeles. It has since expanded into a worldwide expression of Christianity in many languages. The artists devoted to this stream have their spiritual roots in the wide variety of con confessional traditions. These songs, often rooted in scriptural fragments, range from ecstatic praise to intense prayer, and often address God directly in the second person and petition Christ in the first person. Examples of this music stream include As the Deer, Great is the Lord, Shout to the Lord, God of Wonders, and Seek Ye First. The 1960s further opened the door to profound changes in the music of worship in the Christian community. The explosion of technology of that era contributed to the compositions of tens of thousands of new songs appropriate for the worship experience. Religious radio stations began broadcasting 24-7, providing a market for this new music. Inexpensive recording and listening devices were produced and sold all over the world creating a market to support thousands of musicians as they sang and played music for worship. In addition to the Pentecostal stream, another stream that grew exponentially during this period was folk song. Folk hymnody draws from several sources of piety and has always been a part of Christian song. This stream experienced a significant revival in the civil rights movements in the anti-war era of the 1960s. The use of the small and easily transportable acoustical guitars brought informality and intimacy to songs of praise and protest, as well as to the narrative ballads that are immediately accessible to groups. Both the Pentecostal and folk streams have also been heavily influenced by access to amplification systems and electronic devices, which have expanded their accessibility to larger groups, filling mega churches and stadiums. As we continue in worship, we will now sing the devotional song, Lord, I Give You My Heart, composed by Reuben Morgan. Morgan said of this song, the heart of God is for us to be completely sold out to him. Our thoughts, our passions, our dreams, 
everything that makes us who we are only have true life as they become his to shape and to mold. As we give our heart and our soul to God, we then walk in the endless riches that are found in intimacy with him. Please stand as we lift our voices together. be seated. Throughout time and across our world's many cultures, from sorrowful lament to joyful adoration, music is an avenue we use to express our hearts to God. Our church has the Pathfinder program, 
And in the Pathfinders, we challenge our Pathfinders to keep a song in their heart and go on God's errands. So what song do you have in your heart today? The poet and songwriter Fred Pratt Green penned these words. When in our music God is glorified and adoration leaves no room for pride, as it is, it is as though the whole world cried, Alleluia. How often making music we have found a new dimension in the world of sound as worship moved us to a more profound Alleluia. And did not Jesus sing a psalm that night when utmost evil strove against the light. Then let us sing, for, he, for whom he won the fight, alleluia. And let every instrument be used for praise. Let all rejoice who have a voice to raise. And may God give us faith to sing always, alleluia. Most of our university students don't have a song. They have a playlist. So today, what is the playlist of your heart? The closing words of the psalmist are, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So keep a playlist of praise in your heart as you go about God's errands this week, remembering that a mighty fortress is our God.
Thank you, band and orchestra, for leading us to praise our Heavenly Father today. It has been a blessing to me, and I believe to everyone else. And thank you, Dr. Howard and Dr. Nunez and Dr. Wood, for putting this worship experience together for us. And thank you, uh, President Patterson, President Anderson, President Sully, and President Shaw, uh, for being a part of this with us today and leading us in worship. And to our pastoral staff, thank you for sharing this Sabbath with uh, the university church family. Thank you for ministering with our students and for our students. It is a privilege to minister together in this town. I would invite you to remain seated for the benediction and for the postlude, which will follow. Please join me as we bow for prayer. O oh, great mighty fortress, thank you for accepting our worship today. Jesus, thank you for being the hope that is the foundation of our praise. And Holy Spirit, encourage and empower us to love, connect, and share today and as we enter a new week. And please, gracious God, Keep the playlist of praise in our hearts that only honors you now and through eternity. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today in worship. We're glad that you are a part of the Forever family wherever you're watching from. And we're pretty excited because around here, it takes a village to make sure that you can participate in worship. Our team of volunteers works tirelessly week in and week out to plan what you see on stage and what goes on behind the scenes to make sure that it makes it to your phone, your living room, or wherever you're watching from. Today, we need your help. We can only do this because of the generous support of the Forever family. So if you'd like to continue to see the live stream ministry of the Keene Seventh-day Adventist Church grow, we invite you to give to media right here at the Keene Seventh-day Adventist Church. You can do this by following the link on your screen, going to AdventistGiving.org and clicking on the Keene Seventh-day Adventist Church in Texas. Thank you for your support.